Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'da habatil fillah. Moving on now to the ghusl. So Imam Fawzan, hafizhullahu ta'ala, he began the next chapter, which is munasib, which is uh, logical, <clears throat> that we move from the wudu now to talk about ghusl. Ghusl, which is the ritual bathing, not just any shower, as we'll see. And as going back to the hadith of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi verily actions are tied to the intentions. Letting us know that our intention is what distinguishes worship from worship and worship from culture or habits, okay? <clears throat> and we'll talk about that more in detail as we go. Uh, so the Imam said, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he mentioned about the rituals, impurity, ritual impurities, the minor and the major. We talked about a hadith al-asgar, the minor uh, impurities, which is like passing gas, urinating, defecating, akramakum Allah, things like this. The major uh, hadith al-akbar, the major impurities, of course, is uh, postnatal bleeding, menstruation, and janaba. Janaba meaning uh, akramakum Allah after having um, either relations and, and basically having, uh, as we said, uh, premature, or premature ejaculation or ejaculation. <clears throat> and so this kind of purification is called ritual bathing, ghusl, during which one washes one's whole body in a specific way on which we will elaborate. The legal proof for the ritual bathing is obligatory in such cases is that Allah, the exalted, he says, and if you are in a state of janaba, then purify yourselves. And this is in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 6. And it is said that ritual bathing from Janaba, as we mentioned, the sexual impurity, uh, the sexual, either from sexual relations or from ejaculation, uh, this ritual bathing was practiced by the disbelievers during Jahiliya, uh, during the time of ignorance, meaning before before uh, the prophethood of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And it was among the remaining teachers of the religion revealed to Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. This ghuzl. So, uh, and this is of course in the, we're talking about the pre-Islamic times, probably more specifically in the Arab Peninsula. <clears throat> there are six cases in which performing a ritual bath is obligatory for a Muslim. First is ejaculation by a man or woman being awake or asleep, provided that it is associated with Allah, with sexual pleasure in case of wakefulness, if not owing to an illness or inability to control it, then a ritual bathing is not obligatory. So if it is from the excitement, you make ghusl. If it is from something out of your control due to some illness, because some people, they have uh, types of sicknesses where stuff comes out of their private parts, and some people have it where it's always, it always happens. And some people even have issues in their gastric, uh, maybe they're in, in their intestines or their gastric system where they always pass gas. They can't hold wudu even for one prayer. So then there's a hukum for that. And we will talk about it uh, eventually, ta'ala, if not in this dars. Uh, however, it is absolutely obligatory for one to take a ritual bath if one ejaculates while being asleep, which is called wet dreaming. As one in this case is unconscious and may not feel any pleasure. So they may not, they don't know if they had pleasure or not. On the other hand, if one wakes up and finds the traces of ejaculation, it is obligatory for that person to take ghusl, to make ghusl. But if there is no trace of ejaculation, ritual bathing is not obligatory. The second state in which a person must make ghusl is if the man, akramakum Allah, and the woman have relations. Okay, meaning that the man, akramakum Allah, he enters the woman, even if there's no ejaculation. 
uh, as it was stated in the hadith related by Imam Muslim that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam said, when anyone sits um, uh, amongst four parts uh, of the woman and of and the circumcised parts touch each other, a ritual bath becomes obligatory for both. This is in Sahih Muslim. Ida jahada kama qala Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Thus, this. Uh, even if even if there's no ejaculation, that uh, s- sexual relations, akramical law, this makes it obligatory to take a ghusl. Okay. Uh, the third condition, the third uh, situation, is when a person embraces Islam. Uh, they leave disbelief and they become a Muslim. Uh, because the Prophet wasallam, he commanded some of the new converts to Islam to perform ritual bathing following declaring their Islam, you know, after they took the Shahada. <clears throat> this is one that's there's difference of opinion. However, many scholars view that it is desirable, that it's recommended, that it's not an obligation uh, for a new convert to take a ritual bath as the Prophet wasallam has been reported to have commanded, has not been reported to have commanded all people who became uh, Muslim with this ritual impurity. That's dangerous. Uh, the, the fourth, the fourth, um, time, if you will, in which a person uh, must make ghusl, and this is death. So death is the fourth case that necessitates ritual bathing, <clears throat> meaning washing the body of the deceased, except for martyrs, you know, people who were died in shahada, <clears throat> killed in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if a person dies, uh, you know, washing the body, the, the deceased body must be washed. Um, the fifth case scenario is menstruation and postnatal bleeding. So when a woman fear, finishes her hide or her period, then she must, uh, you know, then she's completely finished. Then she must make ghusl. Okay. She makes ghusl when it's totally over <clears throat> and she cannot, even if it finishes, she cannot pray and she cannot fast until she makes ghusl. Uh, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to a woman, he said, so when your menstruation begins, give up performing prayer. And when it ends, wash out, wash out the blood and then perform prayer. Meaning that you make the ghusl, the full ghusl and perform the prayer. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala commands uh, in the Quran, men not to approach their wives in case they're in a state uh, you know, when they're in a state of menstruation uh, until they have purified themselves. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, Ayah 222, meaning that they purified themselves by ghusl. They made the ritual uh, bathing. The ways in which we make ghusl. So this is important. The ways in which we make ghusl. So the ways in which we make the ghusl first is having the intention. This goes back to the hadith we mentioned, uh, hadith of Umar bin al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala an, qad sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul in ma'mal bin niyat. Verily actions are tied to the intentions. So the first uh, way, the first condition or the first thing that we do when we make the ritual, uh, when we're going to make ghusl, is that we have to have intention to make ghusl, you know, to remove the impurities. The second is beginning with the tesmiyah, saying bismillah, okay? <clears throat> and, uh, and, and the third is washing one's hands three times. So you begin with, uh, of course, your intention, and then making the tesmiya, saying bismillah, and then washing the hands three times. Then, 
law, you wash your private parts. Wash your private parts. Then, after washing the private parts, then you perform your regular wudu. You perform regular wudu. Uh, and washing one's head, after that, washing one's head, pouring water over the head thrice, three times, so that it thoroughly reaches one's scalp. Uh, and the last part of that ghusl is pouring water over one's whole body and rubbing it with one's hands. So the scholars even differ about the rubbing <clears throat> over the hands, uh, rubbing with the hands, but that you pour water over the whole body and you rub hands, rub, rub it with your hands. Uh, making sure that the water reaches all parts of the body. Okay. Uh, the menstruating or the woman in a state of postnatal bleeding has to undo her hair, braids, or pigtails when taking a ritual ghusl. Okay. However, a woman in a state of janaba does not have to undo her hair, uh, her braids, uh, to undo her hair, her hair braids. To have a ritual bath, as it does not affect the validity of her ritual bathing in this case. So in the woman who has janaba, she doesn't have to undo her braids. The woman who had her period and finishes or postnatal bleeding, you know, when she finishes, she needs to undo her hair and make sure the water uh, reaches her scalp. <clears throat> and... After that, this is because the janaba is a frequent state. You know, this may happen every day. And undoing hair braids every now and then might cause her difficulty. Still, it is obligatory for a woman in that state to make water reach her scalp. So as long as the water can reach her scalp, then she doesn't have to undo her hair when she's talking when she's uh, making ghusl for janaba. Okay. In general. It is obligatory for one performing ritual bathing, a man or a woman, to ensure that water thoroughly reaches one's scalp and to wash the hidden body parts well, such as the skin of the neck, the skin of the armpits, the navel, and the back parts of the knees. Moreover, if one wears a ring, a wristwatch, or the like, one has to remove it to let water reach underneath. Thus, one has to perform ritual bathing so perfectly verifying that there is not a single body part where water has not reached. And this is in accordance uh, with a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam related to Abu Dawood in Tirmidhi, where he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is janaba under every hair, so wash the hair well and clean the skin or cleanse the skin. Moreover, one should by no means use water wastefully, so not being wasteful with your water, while taking a ritual bath. Rather, one should use little water provided ritual bathing is performed properly and perfectly as prescribed in the shara or the sharia. Muslims should follow the example of the Prophet ﷺ and rationalize their use of water during purification because this was the, this is the sunnah, to not be wasteful and to be actually um, economical with the water. That's from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as is mentioned in authentic hadith that we'll, we will go over uh, in our other lesson. <coughs> and so uh, it's important, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to perform ablution with one mud and to take a bath with one sa'a. You know, so I think a sa'a is, a, uh, if I am correct, is about a, a three hand uh palms full of water so basically when i a long time ago lived in damage we used to make ghusl from a bottle twice as big as this you know at least i did and maybe some other people because sometimes you didn't you didn't have water in the single males area at that time you know you so i would make ghusl maybe in my room <laughs> or actually we would take this water because we didn't have running water there we had to, you had to bring your own water, if I recall. And, uh, you know, that's all I had is those plastic bottles that we, you know, have. So making ghusl from even that little amount. So it, it shows, I know 
firsthand that it's possible. Uh, so we don't need to sit under the shower for 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes if we're making a ghusl shari and to be wasteful. So that's a good lesson for us to practice in general. And people learn and appreciate that when they live in places where water is limited and restricted. For example, if you live in the desert or if you go camping, things like this, these help you to appreciate the na'ma and the ni'am of water or in a place where it's poverty stricken, where there's very little water or in a war zone. But so it is obligatory for a Muslim to screen himself while taking a bath for it is impermissible to take a bath naked while being seen by people. Okay, so we should always be modest, of course. As stated in the hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ said, Verily Allah is modest and he likes modesty and veiling. So when any of you want to take a bath, when any of you takes a bath, he should screen himself. Related by Abu Dawood in Nisa'i. Taking a ritual bath to purify oneself from the state of major ritual impurity is one of the trusts between a servant and his Lord. So one should be keen on fulfilling this obligation properly and observing its rulings carefully. Uh, and when it comes to these Messiah and Tahara and, and really in the deen, it's in, in general, and this is in accordance with the advice of the Sheikh, is that uh, there should be no shyness in these things when you have to ask very serious questions that are going that have to do with your your purity and have to do with you practicing your religion properly that in those cases there's no shyness as uh one of the sahabiyat uh imra'at abi talha radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma she asked the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sa'alat nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam qala Ya Rasulullah, inna Allah la yastahi min al-haq. She said, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, verily Allah is not shy about the truth. Fahal al mar'a ghusl idhiyah talamat. Is it a, uh, must a woman make ghusl if she uh, has a wet dream? The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Idha ra'at al ma, if she sees fluid if she sees water okay so that so that lets her know it's a very sensitive question but when it comes to the dean those things are very important so there's no shyness in asking the ulama or in asking your uh, the students of knowledge or in asking your imam or what have you that has knowledge and that can help you in those affairs a last point i want to mention as some of the uh, uh, ulama mentioned so what Imam Fozen was talking about was the uh, ghusl, uh, the ghusl in accordance with the sunnah. There's also what's known as the ghusl, which is, uh, you know, kifaya, that, that's, that's sufficient. Meaning, by saying the bismillah, you know, of course, having your intention, bismillah, and uh, you know, just putting water over your body in general with tamadmada wa istinshaq, meaning by washing out the mouth and the nose. Washing out the mouth and the nose, meaning so. For example, a person if you're at the in, you're at the beach, you're playing at the beach and it's time and you need to make ghusl. Okay, it's sufficient. You can say Bismillah with your intention and just jump in the water, in the sea. Go under the water, come up, make, uh, uh, you know, wash your mouth and your nose and come out and pray. Okay, that is the, the minimal of the ghuzl. So the minimal is, but also as, I, as we mentioned, the scholars do differ. Some of the scholars say you must have delk, meaning you must have, uh, you must wipe. You must rub the skin. Some say no, it's not. It's sufficient because ghusl as a, a in the Arabic language that what is sufficient is just ta'mim a bedin bil ma. You know, is 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 just having water over the body in general with istinshaq wa istinthar. 
or you know, with washing to mud mother with with washing out the mouth and the nose. Okay, so I think we're we're clear. So if you have clean a clean body of water or what have you, and as long as the body touches every part of the, as long as the water touches every part of the body, and you clean your mouth and your nose, and of course you had the intention and said Bismillah, this is your ghusl. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.